Hey guys, welcome back. Another special edition of Mailbag. This is another Alice 110-1983 Mailbag Special. Um, except on this one, instead of getting the four or five items I usually get, I went a little nuts. Uh, I think I got seven, six or seven items. Not sure. At least I think this is an Alice package. I wrote Alice on it because that's what I think. Um, ordered on May 21st, showed up on June 19th. So, quite a while. Let's open it up and see what's inside. Well, we've got a pile of things. Makes a lot of sense. All right, well, let's have a look at what we have here. Not really sure where to start, so I figured uh, I'd start from the biggest, work my way to the smallest. So this here, if you guys watch the video on the multi-output power supply, um, a lot of you guys had suggested that I get one of these. Um, mind you, you guys suggested a more expensive one. This one is far cheaper. What this is, is this plugs into a computer power supply and then breaks out all the separate voltages available on the computer power supply. So if you can tell here, you got minus 12 volt, got ground, plus 12 volt, ground, plus 5 volt, ground, 3.3, and ground. Now, computer power supplies, you'd be impressed actually how much uh, current you can get out of the 5 and 3.3 volt rails. The 12 volt as well, the negative 12 volt, not so much. But uh, yeah, it has a nice little toggle switch here. It's got these um, binding posts, but I think if you install them properly, you won't get any current through them because they're actually they have these plastic pieces which are supposed to go in between here let me show you so that little nut comes off and then this nut comes off and typically you're supposed to mount these binding posts with one piece of plastic one on the top and one on the bottom but if I do that I would be insulating this post here so uh, it might work without the bottom one, but not without the top one. Yeah, see that? See, I can probably get some current out of that. And what's nice about doing it this way is that you can cinch up this nut as tightly as you want. And then at the bottom here, you can attach a wire coming off of it in permanence. Yeah, I think I prefer it the way they had it, but yeah, I do, it's not it's not ideal. Uh, I think if I'm going to use this for real, I'm going to extend some wires out of this board and have the binding posts elsewhere and have a nice enclosure for it because uh, at the moment I don't really like the weebly wobbly type binding post setup they've got going on here. So yeah, I guess I should go get a power supply and see if it works. Hopefully it uses just standard uh, computer power supply. Now these computer power supplies, you can get them just about anywhere. And uh, actually, you know, my local thrift store usually has one or two. And I'm pretty sure a used power supply is not something I would trust in my computer. But in something like this, where it's just to mess around on the workbench, I think I would be perfectly comfortable using a old computer power supply. Something that's not stable enough for use in your computer, but um, you know, doesn't really matter out here. I'm just going to check these fuses too. So, uh, 20 amps, holy crap. Uh, probably want to replace these fuses with a little bit lower value ones. Oh, this fuse is cracked here. 
Hmm, not a fan of that. Are they all 20 amps? I know I'm going around with a metal screwdriver here, but still. Um, yeah, I think they're all 20 amps. So these fuses are uh, basically useless. 20 amps through any of these rails probably be not a good sign. The tracks are pretty thick, but yeah, I don't know. I don't think I would pull 20 amps off of that. Binding posts are okay. They're not very high quality. Um, this, oh, by the way, this was uh, $5 Canadian. Ooh, the, the type that comes off all the way, so I kind of like that. But yeah, they're a little dinky and small. I think I prefer my own solution to, to this, but anyways, let's see if it works. I found this uh, tiny little power supply here. Uh, I think I have some more, but uh, I tend to take things apart and then not put them together. But anyways... Um, so this is one, uh, it only has, I think it's 10, uh, 20 pins instead of 24, but the 20 pins should work. It just fits this way, pretty sure. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, if we turn this on, oh, we have an LED on here. That's nice. And the fan is going, but I can see that some of the wires on this side are connected to something, so we may not get the full current out of this which is which is fine I'll, I will deal with it I don't think I need the full current anyway so yeah I guess I need a multimeter that would help also these wires are not very cooperative pretty uh, pretty stiff these uh, crappy power supplies this is salvaged from uh, somewhere and this is actually salvaged to make a benchtop power supply uh, so let's see, DC volts, I'm going to prop this up somehow so you guys can see, okay, you see that, you see that, there we go, need some wires, I suppose I should have been a bit more prepared, so there, that's one, and there that's another all right let's see what we got so the ground should be all the same but I'm gonna check them individually just in case what do we have here okay negative 11.93 volts so that's our negative 12 this one there's our 12 volts, 11.83. Uh, I found this power supply, I think, needs a draw on the uh, 5 volt line in order for it to be more accurate. There's the 5 volt line, nearly 5 volts on the dot. And over here, 3.35. So we got all, all of our uh, outputs working and the on off function which is amazing this is a simple little board I there's a few improvements that I would do so I would probably use um, different fuses maybe automotive style fuses because they're easy to pluck in and out this is a little bit more troublesome um, but yeah I like it and it works so that's a good sign and you can even tell they put a little resistor here a small load resistor uh, and it looks like it's between 3.3 volts and ground. They put a little resistor and LED so when it's on you can see little LED lights and the fan here starts going. So that's pretty good. Not too bad. A bit, bit pricey at uh, $5.23 Canadian but that's only like three something American and uh, you do get a lot of components even though they're not the highest quality. But yeah, let's move on. Next one up is this guy. clearly a kit of some sort I'm basically just spreading out these parts I've obviously I had to look up what it is oh hello interesting that's an interesting potentiometer nice 
Well, what this is, is a function generator, as you can see here, ground, square wave, triangle wave, sine wave, positive and negative. Looks like it's uh, 12 volts, runs on, and it uses this chip here, the ICL8038 CCPD, whatever that means. And yeah, so I have this guy, which I paid a little bit more money for, and it came in this nice case, but the chip is not very stable at uh, higher uh, higher frequencies. So I figured I'd try another kit based on another kind of chip. And yes, it's possible that this is um, also faulty or counterfeit. Um, but this one was far cheaper than this one. So this is, um, if I can find it, the ICL 8038 function generator. It was $2.40 or so Canadian which is not very much and it looks like it'll be a quick build um, there's only one capacitor to be installed upside down so that's a good sign and yeah I think it'll be fairly quick and since I've got the analog scope the uh, cheap scope and the um, DS1054Z now I'll be able to try it out on all of those scopes and see what it looks like so yeah not much to see here until we assemble it but uh, I think this is coming soon Next one up is this one, just a little module. Come on out. So this here is another current sensor. It's like the INA219, I think it was. It's similar to that. Um, this, this is the ACS712. And if you look, it's got uh, ground, VCC, and out, so very easily interfaceable with an Arduino. Also, it's a tiny, tiny module. Um, this thing was uh, two sixty, two dollars and sixty cents Canadian. And yeah, the chip on it is the ACS seven one two T. So it's another project to measure current with an Arduino. So we'll take a look at that. I'm not sure if this. Uh, I mean, I'm guessing it outputs a voltage which will be great. We can also track it on the scope so take a look at it. But yeah, so just another... You know what? Actually, now that I think about it, this is actually not even necessary to use an Arduino because it just has an output pin. So maybe I'll take a look at the um, data sheet and we'll try to make this work au naturel. No Arduino. Maybe we'll be able to read the output on one of these. That makes sense because it doesn't look like it's an I squared C component. It's just literally ground, VCC, and out. So it must output a voltage. So we'll take a look at that and uh, yeah, there'll be a nice project for a future video. Next one on the list is these. So there's 10 pieces of these and they're called SW18020 vibration sensors. So we'd have to, you know what, I think I'll, I will sacrifice one for the greater good. I'm assuming inside is just going to be a weight on a spring. And uh, when it shakes, the uh, weight will go towards the outside of this cylinder and complete a circuit. Not 100% sure, but sounds about right to me. Does it come off now? It looks like it's in a plastic tube, which is nice, because if it was in a glass tube, it would be prone to failure from impacts. And really, what good is a vibration sensor that can't take any impact whatsoever? These were, so I bought uh, 10 of these for $1.33. They're extremely inexpensive. One of those things where I'm not sure what I'm going to need until I need it. All right, so that's done. Let me zoom you in so you can see what this is all about. So it turns out I was wrong, but it's actually quite brilliant what it is. So if you see, there's two kind of, let me get a 
me get a little poking bit so I can point out. So if you look, there's two different wires. There's this kind of like uh, coppery looking wire and this kind of like tinned looking wire. If you look carefully, this tinned wire goes all the way through the plastic base and up to the end. And this wire here, the sort of coppery one, coils around that more solid stiff wire. If I hold this and push, you see how solid that is? And this guy here, see how springy that is? So the spring is made out of this coppery wire and this sort of solid thing is the middle. And when you shake it, the spring will shake and contact that wire acting like a normally open switch and when it shakes, well, when you shake it, it's going to close. So I'm going to see if I can do this here. I'm going to put this in continuity mode. Confirming that you can hear that on the mic. If not, well, uh, I'll add it into post, I guess. I'm going to put these together. There we go. And so right now, there's no contact. So right now, there's no beeping. But I'm just going to go touch this. Well, uh, maybe my multimeter isn't actually quick enough to pick it up, or I've borked this sensor, this switch, by taking it, taking off the coating. I'm going to try with another one. Right, come back here. And two. Huh. Well, I can't flick it enough for my multimeter to distinguish. So, okay, I'm going to try to hook up an LED and we're going to get an LED to light. Let's give this a shot. I have a 150 ohm resistor, vibration sensor, and white LED. And the vibration sensor is in series with the LED, so let's see if we can get it to light. Oh, yeah. Hopefully you see that on camera. It is lighting. It's not very bright. I feel like the contact is so momentary on the sensor here. So it's not a definitive on or off. So it'd be good to trigger something like a transistor or maybe even trigger a triple five uh, sensor. Or what am I saying? Triple five timer to go through one cycle every time this turns on. Actually, that might be a good project. And so, yeah, it does work though, which is nice. So I did not bork this sensor by opening it up. So, cool. Now we can move on to the next one. Next one up is these things. These are LED bar graphs in a dip package. Uh, I have actually no idea how they work, but I'm guessing uh, let's see, we have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We have 10 bars. Do we have 20 legs? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, we have 10 legs. So I figure each of these LEDs just have their legs over here. Uh, you may recognize this from uh, Julian Eilert's channel. Julian Eilert definitely um, uses some of these but these are a bit unique let's see if I get them to start no nope. other way around ah here we go okay so we got a blue there with a forward voltage of 2.538 oh looks like the negatives the ooh Looks like the negatives are common together because that is just on that one pin there. So that's blue. Oh, no, it must have just been touching. Okay, that's fine. Next one is green. Green. 
green again so green green so blue green green so far blue green 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 so three greens another green four greens so blue four greens oh there we go this is an orange I don't know if you can tell this one's very dim another orange so blue uh, four greens two orange I think that's how it was three orange there should be another orange I think oh red and last one red so this is a bar graph with multiple colors on it I got five of these um, and if I can see what I write it yeah, 10 segments, three bucks for all five. This is interesting, but I didn't think that the different colors would actually have a different voltage drop. So I'll have to individually sort of adjust the resistors in order to have them all roughly the same color. But yeah, interesting. I kind of want to do some projects with these. I have some logic chips that I think would be fun to play with these things. So yeah, that's why I got them. We can move on to the next one. Next item are these guys. This is five speakers, 8 ohm imp uh, impedance and 0.5 watts output. Um, you'd be surprised these little guys can sound good. Not sure if these guys do, but they can. And uh, just uh, for having half a watt, oh, I can't make them make any noise, even in, uh, figured in diode check. Nope. So yeah, cheap speakers are uh, extremely handy. You're just messing around on the bench. I'm, I don't think these are going to be hi-fi or anything. I would just like some projects to make noise and so I got them. So five of these, um, they were $2.40, 36 millimeter diameter. And I'm not expecting them to come close to half a watt, but hey, even a quarter watt would be nice. So yeah I added these to the cart and last but not least are these two uh, I don't have any precision potentiometers in my entire um, I guess pile of stuff down here um, so I got these guys these are 10 turn I believe and they are 10k potentiometers they got a little bit of a bent pin thing going on here from shipping but yeah I figured I didn't have any and uh, what a 10 turn is is instead of a potentiometer doing you know not even a full turn uh, these guys you do 10 turns at their full range and so it's easier to fine-tune things I'm not sure if this is a logarithmic or a linear pot but if you look here you see I can adjust the resistance very finely or I could go nuts and go really quick but it takes 10 turns to get from one end to the other in 9.9 .9, and then I can range it all the way down to 1.2 ohms so this is very nice for fine tuning so you can really make little fine fine adjustments out of just relatively large motions so that's pretty nice to have. These were quite expensive though. These were uh, two two dollars and eleven cents each. So definitely not cheap. But uh, I figured I'd have a couple on hand because if I need some fine-tuned pots. Oh, what's going on here? Is this one broken? Oh yeah. Oh well. Something's funky on this guy. It shouldn't be OL from one end to the other. There we go. Yeah. 
something funky with this pot so I may have to uh, contact the seller which is Alice in this case and maybe talk about getting a refund because they were fairly expensive yeah if, if I can't rely on them and and by rely on them I mean I'm not sending people to the moon here but at least have reasonable reliability yeah that's not great this one has shaft plate too but does it do that whole resistance jump one and two six point eight six K that's odd two of these legs should be connected to the entire resistor oh there we go see this one's rock solid but this one not so much Oh, it's fine now. I'm going to play with it a little bit and see. Yeah, that's no good. Can't have that jumping all over the this, this spot. All right, so I'm going to contact the seller on this one and see how we proceed. But, yeah, nothing much to see here. They're just uh, 10K, 10 turn pots, about a K a turn. And so these items make up my biggest Alice 110 in 1983 special to date. I'd like to take this opportunity to say a big thank you to my Patreon patrons. Uh, you know who you are. You guys make this sort of stuff less scary. Um, and to all my viewers and commenters, I thank you for watching.